the themes I've been dealing with in my work lately have revolved around flight and people who have attempted flight in various ways, maybe unconventional ways. Um, and I think they allude more to this idea of escape or submission, um, touch on ideas about the American dream. Flight has also been maybe our first, as, as humans, our first real exploration of technology, like something that's outside of our human capability. Uh, the ultimate ex expression of that would be flight, you know, making the human body float through air, simulating the birds, the sp space, traveling through space to other worlds. Yeah, maybe the biggest influence on my work is uh, how to approach a material and how to approach a system in a scenario uh, and to really think about what essentially that uh, material or space uh, can do you know, to really get down to the bottom of it. Uh, my work with the Dome right now is really influenced uh, by my work as an undergraduate working with every material I could you know, ever think of. Uh, pieces of railroad parts and pine cones, putting them together in a way that uh, talks about both of the materials, uh, everything from that to uh, this relationship in grad school that I started to develop, which was about implying a space uh, between video and sculpture, so things that couldn't exist without one or the other. So in order to do that, it's uh, an investigation into the material at its most elementary level. Uh, video is projected light, a screen is anything white or uh, light color that can be, that will receive light. Currently I'm a fellow at the Moorhead Planetarium <clears throat> working on a series of pieces. Uh, right now I'm in the investigation stage of the dome, so trying to figure out uh, what is essential to that space how images move in a three-dimensional dome space. Um, I've been shooting, I guess, these kind of effects pieces, uh, abstract um, processes that exist in front of the lens. So food coloring that's dropped into water, paint that's dripped down a surface, uh, down onto the ground, and when these images are transferred to the dome, they do something completely different that I never would have imagined. Uh, they completely engulf the viewer. Um, they become very textural and visceral and change that skin, that's the dome, into liquid or paint or uh, a ball of glitter. Working with the Renzi and uh, using the RED camera has really allowed me to do this work. Um, the dome is of such a high resolution that traditional uh, HD video wouldn't come close to. Uh, if you scale HD video to the size of the dome, it's scaling it eight times the size of its original. So with the RED camera, I'm able to come a lot closer to that resolution uh, in that detail that's needed to uh, even make motion video work on a dome. I think what's happening now because of uh, the birth of this high resolution video equipment, also the affordability uh, of HD cameras, it's allowing artists to make work that exists in spaces that they never had before. Uh, particularly with the RED camera, which is a somewhat affordable option uh, for independent filmmakers, it's allowing them to actually compete at, uh, at the detail level that Hollywood has used for years, right? You know, I'm not a filmmaker by any means. If, if you wanted to call me a filmmaker, I guess you could call me an experimental filmmaker, but I don't really approach uh, filmmaking in the same kind of manner. Um, and it's nice to have just this high resolution equipment to be able to experiment with and to actually figure out and to make images, to make uh, 
these things happen on a screen or a dome or uh, anywhere really uh, where you can project video. I mean, I think the possibilities are really endless. You know, uh, there has never been video of this resolution before. You know, to do that you would need film, and film is really expensive and a whole other process. So I, I teach my students to really manipulate uh, video, uh, particularly in a video art class, uh, to really uh, play with the material. Uh, the first assignment uh, is this assignment where they're basically required to uh, take the editing of their work so far that you can't reference any of the original shot material. So they take footage of uh, some textures and then it's manipulated so that you don't notice where it came from. Um, and they don't know what they're going to end up with. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the uh, joy of the project. They don't know where they're going, but they end up somewhere. They know when to stop. Keep working and you continue to keep working and you never stop working, you'll eventually get to that point where you want to be or maybe you didn't know you would be at that point. Your work leads you to new places that you wouldn't have imagined. So if, as long as you keep doing that, I think eventually it'll work for you.